Once again, this is Skip McCauley, Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle. I have a story here and a warning about using these uh, cheap Chinese switching power supplies that you can buy on eBay and uh, Amazon, etc. A couple of years back, I built a 100 watt 9 centimeter amp and feed assembly for my Moonbounce dish. I did hours of testing and experimenting and uh, tuning up of the power amplifier itself on the workbench and uh, using this uh, Chinese power supply that's shown in this picture here. It seemed to work well, it was a nice size to use and uh, had a good uh, current rating, but I should have known better because it was too good to be true. When the time came to try working the moon with my new feed in a picture similar to this, uh, things didn't work out so well. As soon as I started transmitting, I could tell there was something wrong. I was only getting maybe a third of the power and one of the LDMOS chips inside was uh, not drawing any current whatsoever. I knew she had blown. I took the feed down and took it apart and sure enough one of the big device amplifiers was blown and I was quite disgusted. These things were not cheap. So I wanted to know what could have taken this uh, device out. It had been working good up to this point but as soon as I got it outside uh, it was it was shot and uh, this is what I saw coming off the power supply the cheap Chinese switching supply on top of the 32 volts DC the crazy thing about it was that uh, these spikes or this noise would be different from day to day and and I think quite quite actually related to temperature so needless to say I uh, I chucked this power supply and decided I had to find something different and I sure didn't want to use a switching supply because I had others here and they looked just as bad what I wanted was a good old-fashioned analog power supply, but where do I get one of those? In my sorted pile of goodies, I've got all kinds of old power supplies like this from my work days. Um, some, most of them are 48 volts, some are 12 volt, and they're usually only good for one or two amps at the most. I, uh, I need something that uh, would be in the area of 20 amps would be nice. When I was building on my 6 centimeter GAN amplifier, I needed a small power supply of 50 volts, and uh, I took one of these same kind of power supplies and uh, kind of souped it up. I rechassied it and added a, an extra pass transistor onto it to give me at least 3 amps. This is what I used for testing the uh, driver stages on this uh, 6 centimeter amp. Why couldn't I do something like this for 32 volts? In fact, after seeing these spikes, from that switching supply and I was using a different type of switching supply for a six centimeter amp why not build a power supply that would give me 32 volts and 50 volts switchable here we go again another wild project ought to be a hair puller so I started experimenting I had a big heat sink with four 2N3055 pass transistors uh, various transformers, various types of circuit boards, and I started reverse engineering some of the other power supplies I've seen at uh, around 50 volts and uh, had a good regulator circuit. The problem as usual is getting the right transformer to give you the proper DC voltage so you don't have a huge voltage drop across your pass transistors. But uh, being at 50 volts and then having to switch it back to 30 volts, that was going to be an issue. Luckily, I had this big, uh, massive toroid transformer and I could rewind and put different taps in, but uh, the darn thing had a 220-volt primary, which wasn't too much of a problem, really. I experimented with different types of regulator circuits, and uh, I want an over-voltage protection circuit also. Uh, there used to be a real nice chip that you could buy, but it became obsolete, so I had to come up with a de different idea. This board didn't turn out at all, so it was scrapped. This was another attempt and it uh, turned out to be good. I wound up using the old standby, the UA723 high precision voltage regulators. And uh, the other board is uh, various switching and over voltage protection. So after hours of testing and blowing up quite a few pass transistors from mostly just sparking the test leads on and off the load here and then I put in one of these fancy FET DC switches. This is actually where I came up with the idea 
to build a proper DC load, which was one of the other projects. Okay, I have a working design. Let's uh, let's get her built. So in order to have this thing as a dual power supply to use with my nine centimeter and six centimeter amplifiers, there's a few things I have to switch and adjust when I go from one band to the other. First, I have to select the secondary taps off the toroid transformer that I rewound to give me enough uh, AC voltage to overcome the load from 30 volts to 50 volts. Next was two sets of jumpers I had to select for the 32 volts or 50 volt selection. This jumper selection is sampling the output regulated voltage and feeds it into the uh, over voltage check and auto connect circuit board. If everything is uh, good to go, the large DC fit switch is closed and uh, the regulated voltage is connected to the output terminal. Also when operating or after the startup, if something was to happen and the voltage was to go sky high, the uh, circuit would detect this and open the FET switch also. So this is what it looks like. Uh, the two circuit boards are on top of that plate. The one on the left is the regulator circuit and the one on the right is the uh, over voltage protection board. You can see the two green terminal strips there, there are the jumpers are selected. The aluminum plate is hinged and swivels up so that you can get access to the bottom and you can see the black terminal strip near the back is where I select the different taps for the secondary off the toroid transformer. The large heat sink at the back side is where the 6 of 2N3055 pass transistors are mounted. The heat sink is mounted upside down just for connection simplicity and uh, it's built as a module so if it needs to be worked on it'll unplug or dis be disconnected by the terminal strips and pulled off. There's a couple of more views from the side. You can see the uh, fan from this side and the filter capacitors. And then on the other side uh, is where the, you can just see the large toroid tucked underneath where the heat, heat sinks for the pass transistors are. There's one more little board to be installed and of course it had to be a pick. It's the uh, We'll call it the power supply status monitor board, which sends me data back to the ham shack. Since this whole power supply is going to be sitting outside at the dish stand, I wanted to be able to see uh, what was, what it was doing and you know if it was working properly. This whole power supply was mounted on a on a back plate there because it was going to fit in this old electrical enclosure I had. It was already full of holes in the lid, and I knew welding it would just warp it, so. Uh, I had to build a new door. I took a piece of aluminum and milled in some slots so it would bend easy. Then I cut out the four corners so that the uh, sides would fold up nicely. Mounted the hinges and the latch and voila, brand new door. It's a bit snug but the power supply fit in just perfectly and uh, boy it wasn't any extra clearance I'll tell you to the door. After a spray paint of my usual gray color I built an aluminum stand for it to mount to so it would stand up vertically on a workbench. This makes it much easier to get at it and set it up for the uh, jump rings and the uh, configurations for the different voltages. The aluminum stand for the power supply has hooks at, on the top so that will hang from a specially built mount on the dish stand. The power supply unit plugs into the main dish enclosure which uh, hooks up to the rest of the circuitry and uh, that's how it's all connected. So pictured here is a test setup. The power supply is configured for 32 volts and I've got it connected to the uh, fairly new DC load I built mainly for testing these uh, units. I have the fluke voltmeter positive test lead connected right on top of the regulators because there is some voltage drop going across the uh, DC FET switch which you'll see on the uh, DC load display here in a bit. This is the visual basic display that I would have in the shack monitoring this from outside. I'm going to start applying the load now and we'll see how she handles the current.
So right around 20 amps is when uh, she starts to drop on the regulators. And this is due to the fact that I uh, don't have enough DC voltage. It wasn't about to rewind the uh, taps on the big Tori transformer because this is good enough. The one display I switched to on the load showed we were pulling about 600 watts of power. So to test a 50 volt supply we have to reconfigure the uh, secondary uh, taps of the uh, Torre transformer. And we'll speed this up a little bit to get the time to go by faster. So after the toroid windings, we have to re-jumper the terminal strips for the overprotection circuit. So with that all done, now we have to turn the power supply on and set the voltage up to 50 volts from the 32 volts it was set on previously. And this of course is done on a voltage regulator board with a 10 turn pot. And slowly turn it up until we get up to just over 50 volts DC. That sets the voltage for the regulator circuit. Now I'm going to crank it up a bit higher to make sure the over voltage trip point works. It should trip out 2 or 3 volts above this level. And I forgot my voltmeter is on the regulator so you won't see the FET turn off. The DC switch but uh, you'll see, you can see the red light flashing on the over voltage protect board there and that's uh, that's what indicates the trip point so it's working. To uh, reset the latch circuit on the over voltage trip I have to turn the supply off let the voltage draw down a little bit and then turn it back on again and she's good to go. Here we go again as before we have the uh, 50 volt power supply hooked up to the DC load and we'll test it as before up to 20 amps. There, we've just reached the 20 amp mark and uh, very little change on the regulator output, so she's looking good. Uh, the second display or screen on the load indicated it was just slightly over a thousand watts being dissipated. And then you can hear the fan automatically coming on the load at a thousand watts, I would think so. For the last and final test, all the work paid off, it was well worth it. Look Ma, 20 amps and no spikes. Great stuff. So once again that wraps it up. So thanks for watching, 73's from V6 Bravo Golf Tangle.